hours. All right. So good morning and happy Friday. Hope everyone is enjoying all the wonderful snow that we've got. Um, welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. And today we're going to be covering two different topics. We're going to be covering the ACH source record. And the second topic we're going to cover, be covering is um, reissuing a payee check when you have to actually go in and update the payee name or the payee address and the check has already been processed. We're gonna go through all of that today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first uh, subject that we're going to cover is the ACH source record. Uh, the ACH source record is similar to the germ maintenance screen in Classic. So if you're familiar with Classic, which probably a lot of you are, um, that record is pretty much the same as what we have out in Classic. So the ACH record can be found under the core option and we'll go ahead, I'll just go ahead and pull up the record so you can see what it looks like. But the ACH record is pretty much used for um, setting up the necessary banking information that is needed, like your header, your badge, your, your record detail for your direct deposit tape file that you're going to be submitting to your bank for your electronic direct deposit. So we're going to go ahead and we will look at that just a little bit. You'll see that I have two ACH source records sitting out here. One of them is for the payroll ACH transfer, which is for your direct deposit. So if we just go in and open that up, we'll take a look at it. But as you look at it, you can see, again, if you're familiar with Classic, it is the same setup as the Germ Maintenance screen in Classic. So all of the information that you're going to be adding here is going to be basically what the bank, what your institution, banking institution is needing to, in order for that file to be accurate for them to actually accept it and upload it. Um, and a lot of times we tell the districts if, you know, if you're, maybe they're switching banks. So if they're doing that, they probably are going to need to work with the bank to find out exactly what they need on this setup in order to, to get it correct. And we do have documentation out there um, under ACH source, and it explains all of the different fields on the ACH source record. So between this and again, the, the district working with their bank, they can get that record created successfully, I should say. Um, you'll notice the other option is an HSA ACH transfer record. So if your districts submit an, H an HSA ACH to their bank, they will also need to have an a HSA uh, ACH source record created. And if we open it up, you can see it's pretty much the same. It's pretty similar. The only difference is the transfer type you'll notice that we have two different transfer types. There's a payroll ACH transfer type, which is obviously for your payroll direct deposits and your, your health savings account ACH option. So you have to make sure that if you're setting up for an HSA, that you have the transfer type set up appropriately. <clears throat> okay. So um, one important thing for the districts to keep in mind is when these records are created, unless there's a change in their banking information, they're not going to have to go out and make any changes to this. It's always going to be out there. Like, unless, like I said, they're switching banks. At that point, they're going to have to create a new ACH source record for the new bank information. And you'll notice that there is an option to, to delete these records. That can be done or in reality, if they wanted to, they could just keep those. So let's say the, the district is switching banks. They could keep the old ACH record out there because when you go into the different field, the different options, you always have to choose the ACH source record that you're wanting to use anyway. And so um, you could probably just, you know, obviously you'd have a different transfer code instead of a one, it might be 002. 
So just keep that in mind, or you could delete the record out totally. That way you don't have to worry about it being out there. Uh, one thing to remember when you're setting up an employee for a direct deposit, you have to make sure that you, you uh, define the ACH source. So we'll go out and go ahead and go into the uh, pay distributions records. And you'll see, I'll go ahead and just do a create to create, or actually just go into an employee that has one. I'll go to create one. And you'll actually see where you have the option to create the ACH source. And keep in mind, this has to be defined in order for the payroll process to work correctly. All right, so we'll just, we'll just go ahead and pull up an employee. Oh, come on. All right. So we'll pick on Brianna here. So let's just say I'm adding a pay distribution for Brianna. If I go in to add it, I have obviously the type direct deposit or check. I'm going to use a direct deposit option. I hit continue. When I do that, it's going to pull up my pay distribution record. Down here, you can see we have ACH information. That ACH source has to be defined. You have to choose the payroll ACH transfer option in order for the direct deposit to work correctly for that employee. And again, the, the ACH source information, both fields, the ACH destination and the ACH source have to be defined in order for it to work correctly. So just keep that in mind. Oops, hold on here, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Um, when you're setting up HSA information, so let's just say we're going to do an HSA ACH submission file, we've got the ACH source created. You have to make sure that when you go into the payroll item configuration record, if you're setting up the, the HSA um, uh, record, you if you're going to do an electronic transfer of the HSA to the bank, you have to make sure, let's go in, and let me find my HSA that I created. Yeah, there it is. Okay, you have to make sure on that record if it's going to truly be an, uh, an electronic ACH submission. You have to go in and there is ACH source that has to be chosen in that payroll item configuration record. If it's not out there, that's going to cause a problem. You will not be able to create an HSA submission file. <clears throat> that is, if they're doing it electronically. Obviously, if they're not doing an electronic upload for their HSA, they don't need to, to populate the ACH source field because they're just going to be creating a check for that, right, for that payroll item. <clears throat> Another place where the ACH source is going to be referenced is when they actually go out to create the ACH tape file or the HSA tape file. So under reports, the ACH submission option, there are two tabs. One tab is the ACH submission tab, which is your direct deposit. You'll see the ACH source is referenced here. So Normally, this always defaults to the payroll ACH transfer. Now, if for some reason your district has multiple banks that they send direct deposit tape files to, which is probably uncommon, they may have more than one payroll ACH transfer uh, file out there. So they would have to go in to the dropdown and choose the appropriate ACH source that they're creating the tape file for. Again, the second tab is the HSA submission option. Same thing applies here. There's an ACH source field that needs to be defined. And again, this automatically defaults to the health savings account ACH that's sitting out under ACH, ACH source. But if you, again, have more than one HSA source sitting out there, you'd have to choose from the dropdown which record you're going to be creating. 
Um, we're, I'm just going to kind of go over the occurrences of the ACH source, which we've actually talked about a few of them already, but I'll just kind of go back over them again. Um, there are occurrences of the ACH source out in the refund ACH electronic payment. So if we go into processing and we go to the payroll item refund, if I go in to refund an employee, I just choose that uh, line item that I want to refund. I click the refund selected payroll item. When I do that, if I click the ACH electronic payment, you will see ACH source is an option that has to be populated. And again, you would have to choose if it's a payroll ACH transfer or a health savings account payroll item transfer and then process the refund accordingly. Another occurrence of the ACH source is out in the audit report. So you can actually audit on the ACH source record if you, if you want to. You can see that this is an object that act, actually is auditable. So I could just choose that, that object and I could audit just on that alone. Under mass load, the pay distributions, um, the transfer type and the transfer code are used together to find the ACH source for direct deposit. So um, you have you know, your transfer type, which is payroll ACH transfer or health savings account ACH transfer. And then you also have the, the transfer code, which is like your 001, 002, et cetera. Those actually can be used in mass load. So that's another occurrence where ACH source may occur. We talked about the payroll item configuration record where the ACH source has to be defined if you're going to actually be creating a direct deposit ACH file. We talked about the pay, pay distributions record, which is the for each employee, if they're going to truly have a direct deposit, that ACH source has to be defined. We talked about the ACH submissions, which is your ACH tape file submission or your HSA tape file submission. And then we also have rules that are, are um, referenced as far as ACH source. So I'll go into the rules. And there are actually ACH source rules that can be defined. So if you want to allow an employee to create ACH uh, source records or delete them or run a report on them or update them or review them, they can actually do that. So I'll just go out here and I'll show you the different. Hey, Lori. Yes. Lori. Yes. Yes. Lori, can you hear me? Um, yes, Carrie can. Snyder has a question. Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you want? Did you see me, the chat? Um, I'm, I'm, do you I want me to read it for you? Yeah. Go I don't know if you can. For me. I don't see the chat for some reason. Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. if a district is changing banks. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if a district is changing banks, if we create a new ACH source, is there a quick way to update all the paid distributions or would it be better to edit the existing ACH source for that reason? Gotcha. Um, yeah, that, that's a really good question, Carrie, because like you said, if you're actually updating an ACH source record, I guess in reality, It, to be honest, Carrie, just off the top of my head, what I'm thinking is I would actually create the new record and have that be the 001 record and then change the, I think you can change it. Let me go look. But I'm thinking you could change the old record to like some different number, like an 002 let me look, because that way you wouldn't even have to change it on the pay distribution. So let's just see. Yeah, I could change the transfer code on this old record to 002. 
Then my new record, I could create as the pay, payroll ACH transfer date code 001. And because I'm defining that as my 001 in my pay distributions, that's, I already have the 001 defined. So I would not have to do anything with my pay distributions at that point. Let me just take a look at this and see, but I'm pretty sure that would be your best bet. Oops, no, it changed it to 002. Yeah. Ooh. Unless, unless you just go in to that record and make the, the changes in that record, you'd almost have to. Yeah, you'd have to make the changes on that pay, that ACH source record that's already sitting out there in order to not have to change the ACH source, source information on the pay distributions. So yeah, you would have to do that because that record is already defined. Hmm. Yeah. I think you would have to do that. Let me think about it a little further, Carrie, but I'm thinking that is your only way is you're gonna have to change the, old, the record that's sitting out there. You would just have to change the banking information on that record in order for it to, to still be defined on the pay distribution record. But I will double check and make sure, I'll let everybody know if there's a better way but that's the only way I can see that it would be without, you know, adding a brand new record out there. Now, if you had to add, if you had to add a brand new record. Lori. Was, yes. Yes. Uh, Rhonda came back on the chat and said, I had a district which did that. We went into core bank account and changed the new bank to the default. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, that would make sense. Yeah, that's that's a good, that's true. I never thought of that. So yeah, could definitely do that. Does that answer your question, Carrie? Does that help? Any response? There, yeah, Andrew? she said that helps. Okay, gotcha. Okay, good deal. Yes. Uh, yep. Okay, yep. Perfect. So the last thing we were going to thank you. The roles, and again, you there are roles sitting out there that an an, uh, an employee could be granted that would allow them access to the ACH source record. And let me see if I can find them here or USPS. Where are you? Well, manager, that's what they are. Hold on. Up there they are. Right here. Uh, there's a USPS manager, ACH uh, source, create, delete, report, update, view, and the, the main ACH source record. So again, those roles are out there and available if uh, you wanted to grant someone access to the ACH source. Does anybody have any other questions on the ACH source object? Okay, we will go on to our next subject, which is going to be updating a payee for um, reissuing of a, of a payee check. So uh, we're gonna talk about this a little bit when payables have been processed. So let's just say we process them and we have a check out there and either we send it or it's not sent. And we, we discover, we are told that the payee name is wrong. They've changed the name and we need to have that fixed on the, on the check. Okay, at this point, since the, the payables are already processed and everything is out in history, we can't just go in and void that check, change the payee, and then print a new check. It's not going to work. The old payee information will still be on that check. So what we need to do, there's kind of a twofold. There's two different ways this can happen. So we're going to talk about both of them. So the first one is going to be basically 
we're going, we need to change the payee information for a check that we got back. We said the payee name needs to be changed. We got to fix it. So what we need to do, um, there's no other outstanding payables sitting out there for anybody, for anything, or for that particular payee. Okay. So what we need, to, what we'll need to do, first thing, is we're going to go in and we're going to change the payee name, the payee information. So let me just kind of go out here first. We'll kind of backtrack. We're going to go out to outstanding payables. Now. The payee that I'm going to be working with is Abbeville Cafe, all right? So if I go in, I should be able to go out to pay, payables detail. And Abbeville Cafe is a 537 payroll item code. I just want to look and make sure that there are no other ones sitting out here, which there shouldn't be, but we'll double check. So I'm going to go in and make sure there's no 537 sitting here. We, and there's not. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the payee record for Abbeville Cafe, and I need to change the name on that. So we'll go ahead and go into payables or payables, geez, payroll item or payees, if I can get it right here. Let's find Abbeville Cafe. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change. Maybe I have to change the name and the address. I have to change everything on this. Sorry, it's so slow. Everything's just kind of running a little bit slow here this morning for some reason. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is change the name. So new name cafe, and then we'll just change the address to one, two, three, four. New address. We'll just do Ohio and we'll leave the zip code the same. We're going to go ahead and save it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the payments. Man, it's kind of slow here. I'm going to go to the payee payments. And the payment number I'm going to be looking for is 100150, which is this one right here. You'll still you'll see that it still shows Abbeville Cafe because again, this is all coming from history. What I want to do is I'm going to select that payment. And I'm going to void it. When I void it, put the date in here. When I void that check, it's actually going to put those payables back out into outstanding payables. So what I have to do, oh my gosh, <laughs> sorry, it's so slow. I don't know if it's my internet or what's going on. Okay, so we're gonna go to the outstanding payables. Now, if I go to the payables detail again, I should be able to pull up the 537. These are the payment that I just voided. Now I have to go in and post these so I can create a new check. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them all in and post them. Oops, in the dishwasher too. Okay. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use the PDF option just so you can see the information, the name information. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see that in the Excel, Morning. but just a little bit easier. The leftover omelet is in the someone needs, pink, someone needs to mute. Um, Tupperware okay, container go ahead and mute yourself. if you're interested in that. There's uh, also bacon. There we go. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and I'll pull this up. So you can see my check now has the new name cafe, the new address, and the new city information. I can print that out and send it. That's how you're going to basically go in and reissue a check. Pretty much if there's, there's no payable city out there that relate to that same payee, okay? Now, let's just say 
that you have payables sitting out there for that payee from another payroll that you just processed. All right. And you don't want to include the, the, the voided check that you're going to be reissuing. You don't want to include that in that check that you're going to process for that payee because what we just did, if you went out and you had payee information sitting out there for this payee, what's going to happen is when you go to process outstanding payables, unless you selected only the payables that you wanted from the, pri the, the payroll you just processed, it was going to include everything. So the voided check and the payroll that's sitting out there. So what we can do is we could go in and let me see here what we're going to do. <laughs> um, we'll go in, first of all, we're going to basically do another payee. This one is going to be the Country Club Estates uh, Studio. So that is payroll item 609. So if I'm in outstanding payables, the payable detail, and I pull up 609, you'll see I have a 609 sitting out there, okay? This is from a previous, from a previous pay or a payroll that I just processed. And you'll notice the payroll description says February 14th or February 15th pay. Okay, with that being said, when I void, I'm gonna void a check for the country club estate because I basically have to go in and make a change to the name. Gotta get that all corrected. So what I'm gonna do is I will go back in to the payee. Maybe. Okay, and let me just find country club. Maybe. This one, country club estate studio. I'm gonna go ahead, I want to modify that because I got a check back and now they're saying uh, the name on the check is wrong. It has to be a uh, new country club. Okay. Oops, I could type here. Okay. The address is right. It's just the name on the on the check is wrong. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the change that I made on the payee record. All right. So we saw out of outstanding payables, there is one sitting out there for that particular payee. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into payment because there's a, a check that they sent back that I have to avoid. We're gonna go back to payments payee. And the check that I'm, I need, or the payment number I need to void is the 100134, which is this one right here. And it incorporated dates 719 and 730, and it was for $162. So I have to go in and mark that check, and I'm going to void it. Same thing's going to happen when I void that check. When I go back to outstanding payables, that those checks are going to be sitting out there. But again, I had one check sitting out there from another pay I don't want included in this check. So I'm going to go to the payables detail. And if I go ahead and pull up 609, it should give me all of the checks. But down here, this check, this February 15th check, I don't want included. Well, your district may have multiple checks, multiple records that they don't want included, okay? Now, the problem being, right now, we have it set up, you cannot filter on payday. That's kind of a problem because you pretty much, like in this case, I would probably want to pull up anything that was dated 730, but I can't because that's not an option currently in the grid. We do have a JIRA issue, uh, USPS RF feedback 919 to fix this. But for right now, you can't filter on the payday. 
So the next best thing I'm going to have to filter on is my payroll description. So obviously I can see the word test is in all of these, but you'll notice here, I have one that's from a 7-9-T payroll and just says test. The others are test ACH2. And I want to basically process the check for anything that shows the word test. So I could go into the payroll description and I could use the wild card, the percentage sign, before and after. And what it should do, it should pull up every occurrence of the word test. So if I go back in, where'd all of them go? Whoa, there it is. You can see it's pulling up everything that has the word test associated with it. But you'll notice my February 15th is not there, which is, is correct because I don't want that to be out there. So at this point, I've got all of the checks that I want to, or all of the objects that I want to reissue that check for. So here I can go in and select all these items. I can post it. When I post it, sorry, it's kind of slow. You'll see that it shows $162. That was that check that I voided. I want to go ahead and I want to reissue this check. So I'm going to go ahead and post it. Oh. I think it's got to be my internet. Very slow today. All right. <coughs> so here is my new check the new country club test that I changed the name for, I can actually print this out now. And then you'll notice when we go back to payables detail, that February 15th check should still be sitting out there. Let me get rid of this filter for test. Come on, there it is. February 15th pay, still sitting out there. Then they can actually process that through whenever they're ready to process those payables and they should be all set. Um, does anybody have any questions on this? Again, the key is with this, because payables have already been processed and everything is in history, it's a little different than classic. You can't just go in, change the payee, void the check and reissue it. You can't do that. You have to go through these steps in order to process a, a check with the new payee information. All right, any questions on that? No questions? Everybody's so quiet this morning. It's Friday, that's why. All right, if no, no, no other questions, um, everybody have a great weekend and thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.